It's busy and whatnot. Whoops, is that the wrong thing? Yeah, okay, here we go. It's recording. So, um, all good things though, right? Yes, sir. All great things. Cool, man. So now where are you at now? Because I, I thought I saw that you had changed. You're no longer... Yeah. No longer in Norfolk, Virginia. Not at uh, OD, ODU anymore. I'm uh, we're, we're uh, living here in Dallas. Um, been here, I want to say, since October. Okay. And with the whole COVID transition, and everything like that, um, they didn't renew my contract at ODU, which was a blessing in disguise because we had been wanting to relocate for, uh, I think, since we had got there. So, so um, he said, "Such as you landed, huh?" Yeah, it, it was uh, it was a blessing, uh, you know, great opportunity and all, but you know, we just wanted to get closer to family and friends and find something else more suitable to uh, to my needs. Um, so we've been here in Dallas. Started out working as a permanent sub at Kip Troop Elementary. I want to say for what about two or three weeks, I was working as a permanent sub, and um, ended up getting hit up by um, Dallas ISD for their climate and culture coordinator position uh, oh, wow. within the, the, the headquarters, yeah. And so when the school that I'm at right now found out that I got that um, opportunity and that I killed the interview, they uh, gave me a job promotion <laughs> to lead teacher. <laughs> uh, they're great math, which is crazy, catch this. I'm being paid more doing that than I was than, uh, at USC and ODU. Are you serious? So, yeah, it's crazy. I'm, it's easy. It's fun. I love it. I love being able to impact the students and teach them every single day. I'm able to uh, come home, spend time with my family. You know, it's just everything. It's literally ideal. Everything I would want. And on top of that, um, starting up my own entrepreneurial business as a personal development coach program. So that way, holistically, I'm helping people physically, mentally, spiritually, socially, everything, um, as well as incorporating personal training sessions and boot count workouts and everything with that as well. So things have been, things have been booming fast. It's been, it's been amazing, man. I'm the, I'm the, I, I would say that I'm definitely the happiest I've been in a long time. You got a little glow about you and everything, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got a little glow. Um, well, again, uh, man, I appreciate your time and, um, you know, willingness to do this. Um, and so what I do, I don't know if you've seen some of my other little videos and whatnot, but, Mm -hmm. uh, normally, I just kind of start out with an intro and just kind of go in, into it from there. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get that started. Uh, hopefully, we have some young uh, student athletes that are watching this and listening to us. So that's my hope uh, for this. So uh, what's up, everyone? This is Pat Brown. I'm a financial advisor uh, with Edmonds Duncan in Lawrence, Kansas, and uh, played football for the University of Kansas years ago and played outside linebacker. It started for three years and became very, very passionate about uh, financial literacy for student athletes, which led me down this, this road of starting to interview former student athletes with the hope that current student athletes can learn uh, from these former student athletes of what to do and what not to do. And so um, I just, uh, again, the passion has been going on for years and years and it's, you know, thank goodness that some things have kind of happened and where I was able to kind of see this kind of come to fruition. Um, I always also start out with the definition of financial literacy, which is the uh, possession of a set of skills and knowledge that allows an individual to make informed and effective decisions with all their financial resources. And I always think it's important to say that because I think a lot of uh, student athletes kind of have this connotation that financial literacy or the word literacy means that maybe they're not the brightest, which is uh, mm -hmm. definitely not the case. Um, I think that a lot of the habits that we form as student athletes are very, very similar to that, which we should form with financial literacy. And so that is my hope. My ultimate hope is just to really have student athletes form those habits sooner than later. Mm -hmm. That And that way, once they get out of school, they're able to uh, rely on those habits and make better informed decisions. So got that out the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to do a little cyber stock on my man, Lubbock. Uh, and so for the, those that don't know, this is Lubbock Smith I have with me. Uh, very, very impressive young man. I, I feel strange saying that because I'm old now, man. I, I'm old, got the gray. So, um, man, so 2012 named to the athletic director's honor roll. Um, 2009 collegefootballnews.com freshman All America, honorable mention. Uh, the Sporting News freshman All Big 12. Uh, 2008 
KU defensive scout team player, which I was a scout team player back in the day. <laughs> I got I got yeah. a scout team player yeah. here, boy. I love yeah. my little my little plaque. We had a little plaques hey. back then. We didn't have big. You got to start somewhere. You got to start, start somewhere. somewhere. You got to start somewhere. So, um, again, uh, hopefully, I got some young student athletes listening to this, uh, guys. This is Lubbock Smith played ball at the University of Kansas, and so. Having said all that, man, welcome, uh, welcome, welcome. And and if you can, uh, and you kind of talked and touched briefly mm -hmm. uh, when we first started talking, man, we'll kind of say that for the end. But when you first got to KU, uh, if you can kind of tell me about, I guess, your thoughts and interactions with uh, finance in general. So we're talking about budgeting, savings, credit. Uh, did you have any knowledge of that type of stuff coming in or did anybody ever talk to you about that? I would definitely say it was briefly mentioned. It wasn't something that I was competent in, something that I was very um, a student. I would definitely say that uh, budgeting was not something that was exciting to me. It was more <laughs> so like I'm trying to make and spend. Um, I wish, I wish, and having known what I know now, that um, I have more of a a heart towards uh, wealth and being able to cultivate, you know, resources, you know, financially. So that way my, my family can, you know, benefit from it, which, you know, we're in a better spot now, thankfully, but right. at the same time, I feel like, you know, I could have been a lot further off had I known things over time. Um, the good thing is that I had, you know, my mom, I, I came from a single parent household. So my mom did the best she could mm -hmm. to, you know, educate me on, you know, working hard and, you know, saving your money. You know, now what I know is it's not just, you know, making money and saving, but it's also how can you have your money make money off itself? Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a whole nother level that I've been learning over time. But uh, also having my, um, my godfather, who was my coach and mentor uh, growing up, um, he stepped in the place of my, my dad when my dad went to prison at the age of 10. And uh, he would teach me so many things in terms of, you know, you can't have, <laughs> I, I feel so old saying this is crazy. Come on now. <laughs> Oh, 